Hello, everyone, and welcome. It is Wednesday, the 5th of January, 2022. Welcome to the new year. We are meeting with the Knowledge Bolide crew as usual, and today we're going to be discussing mesosiderites. So that's a chondrite ungrouped 1500. So that's a relatively early NWA number. Um, back when the chondrite ungroups were below 100, which they're over 100 now. Waiting in the mail for me when I got back was this. Thank you, Topher. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. <laughs> so a uh, little, little Munio dog tag, which um, when I finally get a uh, curio for all my pieces, that'll be what I'm hanging the keys off of. Oh, nice. Uh, went ahead and uh, picked up a piece of uh, chain par, which is uh, from India. So this is an LL uh, subtype 3.4. I think there, uh, if the memory serves me correct, I think there's 28 total of those. I got a interesting one here called Ozerki. It's got some nice crust, nice crust on it. It's also got some slick and slide on Ooh. it. There are some shiny areas with striations. It's 33.99 grams. This is another slice of the same one. Oh, it's and, gorgeous. Yeah, at about 230, there's a uh, there's a carbonaceous inclusion there. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look carefully, that carbonaceous inclusion has chondrules in it. This this one has uh, this rock has some brecciation possibility too. NWA 13909 LL 3.15. So fairly permanent. Oh. I usually like the etched ones, but somehow, for some reason, this one double polished really catches my eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a pretty oh. one. Oh, yeah. How it has that metal off yeah. to the side. Mm. And a beautiful etch. This one, the etch is working for it, but the, the metal is what really catches my eye all over to one side. This is his astrophotography highlights of 2021. So-called uh, Barnard's loop, that's the reddish one that you can see here. Wow. That's an emission nebula. And that's, that's an cool. absolutely wonderful region on the, on the sky. You can see uh, Messier 78, mm. so a dark nebula and a reflection nebula. And this mm. reddish uh, one is Barnard's loop. That is really good work, Marco. Thanks a lot, Topher. It's an open star cluster with uh, emission nebula and uh, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Um, you have very young stars. These are very hot stars, which uh, show that bluish color. And the older stars are uh, usually, yeah, more to the, to the yellow or reddish side. The most interesting part is that uh, most everything that we knew about stars, we know from our sun. And here you can see um, the photo uh, sphere of our sun. And uh, you see some sunspots, these dark regions. You see the granulation of the photosphere. So uh, the convection of the gases and the plasma on the sun. This is uh, the crater Copernicus, um, a very famous crater on the moon. And um, only to give you an idea, the diameter of that crater is about 95 kilometers, I think. On the upper right corner, it's Stefan's Quintet with about 300 million light years. Absolutely incredible. Uh, Mike Kelly has been teaching us about different types of meteorites. So we are talking about mesosiderites, which are part of the stony iron group. So as Topher briefly mentioned at the, uh, the beginning, uh, the mesosiderites are uh, <clears throat> a mixture of roughly 50% uh, iron nickel metal and silicates. Um, they are the second type of stony iron meteorites. We already talked about the palisites. But this slide right here was new information for me. And I hope everyone digests this and learns this because this is probably new information. This is different. So the numbers used here are not the same as the numbers used for chondrites where a one and a two would say you're aqueously altered and a three through a seven means you're uh, almost no metamorphic alteration all the way through severe metamorphic alteration. These uh, letters that, that start out with uh, tell you kind of what type of material the silicates are. At the bottom, you have metamorphic grade in the form of, of texture. Your chondrites, your three through your seven is, is metamorphic grade, but this is a little different because it doesn't start at three and then work both ways towards one and two and then also up towards seven. Uh, it starts at one and runs straight through to four. 
So a one would be a fragmental matrix. So basically the silicates are broken up. So a two has some recrystallization going on. So it's like a partial melt. And your threes have a high degree of recrystallization going on. This is my only mesocyrite, remember that, that I own. It's NWA12949. Uh, it's a find in 2019. So on this picture, you can, you canceled out a lot of the reflections and you can really see the silicates in there. Mm -hmm. We're three weeks away from the meteorite mansion, folks. I think this is 158 grams. Wow. It's big. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. I got this from Blaine Reed in, in Denver a few years back, but yeah, I just fell in love with this piece as soon as I saw it. He had it. I have a piece of, uh, Mincy, Missouri. Oh, wow. A thick it's a, piece. Th a thick one. Uh, this was found in 1857. And this is the rarest meteorite from Missouri that I have in my collection. It's uh, Congrats. 30, 35 yeah. grams. So I have a couple of Bondocks to show. But this is one of the iron nodules. Oh. Oh, wow. wow. That's big. Yeah. Yeah, it's about 75 grams and about 40 centimeters across. That is a big slice. Yeah, this is uh, 128 grams. Whoa. Being a subtype person, you got to have some of the rare classes. So there's a mesosiderite B2. That's 1912. So again, there's less than 10 of those. Wow. So it's got uh, wow. a lot of metal in there. Metal areas. Yeah, it's a very fine matrix. That's beautiful. Um, here's a specimen of, a, of an A3. I do believe there's like six of those total. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh. So, again, I've got a couple of mesosiderites, and this one's my favorite, 14518. And because I started oh. cutting it, and that saw blade ran into a dead stop. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, that sat in, metal. it stopped for quite a while. That is and, unbelievable. That is why. Mm -hmm. So that's. But this is a Ninninger special. It's the Bondock. Oh, yep. It's 231 grams. Uh, and then it's like they used um, a, a, like a Rust-Oleum or something. It's like a paint, if you notice. The historical fact that a Ninninger, that's, that's why I, I ended up securing this piece. Beautiful. So like a pride and joy. This is the main mass to NWA 13532. It's a one of one. It's the only mm. B23 meteorite in existence. And it's an end cut. So let's take a look. Oh That's my. Oh. <laughs> okay, I can't. Yep. I actually bought it from Chris while it was still under the classification process. He knew it was going to be subtyped, but we didn't know what it was going to come in at. And I bought it and it turned out being a one of one. <laughs> Oh, so yeah. score one for Topher. Shout out to uh, Juan Aviles Poblar. It's a single stone end cut and it's oh. so beautiful. All of the nodules have texture. And this yeah. one up here is this one up here is hanging on for its dear life. <laughs> wow, look at that. It's yeah. barely on it. But if you look at the exterior of this one, you can totally tell it's different than the other one, or maybe it's just more weathered, but really can't tell by the outside what you're getting on the inside. Mm. Thank you so much for an amazing hangout. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.